exciting. We're going to talk about PEO, which is something that I recently, well, I want to say I recently learned about, I learned about it about two years ago, but before I was like, what's PEO? I remember I learned about it because a client asked me, Heather, we have this meeting with ADP um, to learn about their PEO. And I'm like, PEO? I'm like, okay, you know, totally doing the, okay, sure. You know, and then I get off the phone with her and I'm Googling, like, what is PEO? (laughs) I had no idea what it was. Yeah, I learned very shortly after that what it was. I, well, I think this, uh, that's where you learn a lot of stuff is that, you know, our clients are very, very clever and they're creative. And so they, they are. keep throwing things at you that you're like, okay, I caught it. And then, you know, you get a few more things underneath your belt and you suddenly feel like, wow, this is, this is getting easier and easier. But I agree with you. So the, the PEO conversation happened um, for me years ago because I had somebody who wanted to transfer from a different payroll solution and into a PEO because they wanted to be able to um, get some additional benefits, which is exactly what we're going to be talking today. So these additional benefits that you get and what are some of the perks to being part of a PEO and then also to make sure that you know that you have resources to tap into to talk further about this PEO conversation with our good friends at ADP. Definitely. And we would like to introduce Michael. We have a slide for Michael Scalfani um, in just a few slides, but he's sitting there and I'm looking at his face going, we need to introduce him. So welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us um, today. I, I am so excited about this episode because there is so much information that you're going to be sharing um, with everybody about this. And it's super valuable information. Yeah, hey, listen, uh, first off, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. First appearance on uh, At The Hour uh, with you guys. So uh, it, pleasure is all mine. A great audience of some of our trusted advisors. And, you know, I'm interested to dig in as well with everyone this afternoon to talk about something I'm very passionate about and a little bit really about how ADP's business has changed. You know, the minute I tell someone I work for ADP, the first thing they say is, Oh, payroll company, right? And that's kind of really was the foundation um, for, for, for our business for, for decades, right? Um, but the interesting fact as we have evolved now as more a, the, of a leader uh, with regards to human capital management, actually 25% of ADP's revenue runs through um, our PEO model. So we have grown from a, a small blip on the radar internally um, for ADP. Um, to one of its uh, biggest um, business units. And that's all from feedback that we're getting from, you know, our clients as to how we can service them better, what needs they have, and our continued partnership with the CEOI, COI uh, and uh, CPA uh, community as we've grown from a payroll company to more of an authority on human capital management. The CPA community has evolved more from we do taxes to we are now into more of a consultative type business. So as our business businesses evolve um, together, it's interesting uh, that we take this parallel uh, going forward and uh, into the future. So excited to be here today. Um, looking forward to continued dialogue um, with you this afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, we're happy that you're here. And Heather, I'm gonna go ahead and, and let you start your introduction if that's all right. Sure. So uh, hi to all of my friends that are on the call and to my new friends that are joining us for the first time. Um, my name is Heather Satterley. Looks like I need to update my uh, my picture because I now have pandemic hair and it looks like it's grown about six or seven inches. So I'm looking at it going, hmm, maybe I think that's not actually me. Um, so I'm Heather Satterley. Uh, I am the owner and founder of Satterley Training and Consulting, which is a consultancy firm that helps accounting professionals, businesses, anybody who's looking to uh, integrate their uh, accounting software with third-party applications, I'm your girl. I love doing that. Uh, I also have an accounting firm called Saturday Accounting uh, Services, which um, just launched its new website today. So super excited at SaturdayAccounting.com. And then of course, uh, I am part of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network and I do a lot of public speaking and content development and I absolutely love that. And I'm Liz's best friend, so. (laughs) (laughs) Not just self-proclaimed, but I agree. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, so I am Liz Scott. And like many of you here, 
I'm an accounting practitioner and we have an accounting firm in Oklahoma and we really serve that QuickBooks community. And so what that means for us is, uh, you know, really any type of situation where we have an ecosystem that needs to, um, an app that needs to connect to that ecosystem, we really enjoy connecting them, which is why the Appy Hour was born because both Heather and myself have accounting firms and we work with clients who often need to add on an app. And so Appy Hour was born out of this love for apps and connecting with our community and sharing with our peers what we've learned along the way so that way we can say, hey, don't do this, <laughs> or hey, this is a really good solution, and we want to bring it front and center to you so that way you have the best tools possible to run your practice. And in part of that, our wonderful news is that in 2021 that we have ADP as our champagne level, level sponsor, and so Appy Hour only chooses one of these a year. And so it's a, it's a thing that Heather and I definitely put our heads together. And we have people who we've said no to in the past. And we want to partner with somebody that we think is amazing and speaks truth to how our values land. And really, we're excited that that is ADP this year. We are super excited. It's a... It's a partnership that we've had with ADP for a long time. Um, so it's super special that, that they're on board for our champagne level sponsorship this year. I'm excited to see the magic that we create. And I'm just gonna, I have to grab this and show everybody because I have this up on my, um, I have this up on my desk on a shelf, but this is a champagne bottle that the ADP team had created just for us in honor of our champagne level sponsorship that we now have as a keepsake. So just thought that was really cool. I thought I'd share it with everybody. Well, thank you for sharing. Yes, I mean, that's that. It, I don't think I've ever had my name on a champagne bottle before. So <laughs> I was like, look, mom, look. <laughs> Liz, because we're doing CPA, I'm going to stop and do the first poll if you don't mind. Okay. Absolutely. And so, yes. Right. And so I pulled that up on the screen. And okay. so we do offer CPE credit. And part of that is that we do have C CPE polls. So go ahead, Heather, and launch that so poll. You, and this yeah, is how we get the CPE. Perfect. Fantastic. We got a lot of activity there. So we'll be leaving those polls up just for about a minute to give everybody an opportunity to vote. And then I'll count you down. I'll give you five seconds so that you don't miss out on your on your CPE. Oh yes, we will call out the CPE link to get your CPE in just a minute. We have a slide. So once I close the poll, we're gonna show you that in just a second. All right. So looks like we have just about 25 seconds left. So. Fantastic. Yep. And so should I give on the dis disclaimer that we all know that you have to be here for at least 50 minutes in order to be able to get that one credit of CPE? Yep. <laughs> and answer the polls. So are we about ready to count down, Heather? I am. So five, four, three, two, and one. I'm going to go ahead and end that polling. We got 90% of people voted. So uh, I'll go ahead and share these results. It looks like 39% are very familiar, 33% are somewhat familiar, and 28% are not um, familiar at all. So that's, that's a pretty good mix there. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Fabulous. Well, so today is really exciting because we're going to be talking about you know, a few things that have been happening this prior year and what that has meant for us now. And so 2020 was an unexpected year. 2020 means that we traveled through the unknown and the unexplored. And on the other side of it, we've learned some things. And so part of what we're going to be sharing is some of those insights that were learned and gained through the 2020 activities. And, you know, anytime that you have a large um, bit of growth, things happen from that. And so that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today is how did 2020 change the face of business and the face of the company culture? And one of the things that we've learned is that 
a lot of the people in our community are really wanting to make sure that their company culture looks like the society that's around us. And I would definitely say that last bullet as well, that we're <laughs> tech reliant. Wow. I mean, I've, I've seen a huge trend. Even some of my clients that were previously slightly tech adverse have now started to adopt it. And now it's a part of their norm. So virtual conferences happening, virtual chats happening, you know, lots of things are now offered and uh, via tech. Definitely. And I, and I also feel like, you know, that second bullet, more sharing of brand values, I think that's more important than ever. So it, it, it especially with millennials, but I think this goes across the board, no matter what group you're in, is if people want to feel like their, you know, their um, beliefs and their values align with the organization that they work in and they represent. And so I feel like that's a big thing that kind of came to light over 2020. Um, our country th went through some turmoil for sure. And I think that that's something that's really, you've seen a lot about um, with a lot of companies. I agree with you. So, you know, being able to share your values, being able to honestly go out and attract you know, potential either clients or potential team members by sharing your brand's values is really important. Definitely. And so, you know, uh, whenever we were talking to ADP about this episode, they said, well, we have a lot of statistics because of being in the payroll industry. They actually had done a lot of polling in the market. And so they brought to us a couple of really cool things that they've learned. And Michael, do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks. Thank you for the for the time. You know, it's interesting looking back at 2020. I, I don't want to kind of derail where I'm headed, but I saw some someone present something the other day as a slide, and it said 2020, written by Stephen King, directed by Quentin Tarantino. I said, you know what? That is probably the best way uh, to sum up what was a quite, uh, I guess, unusual. Uh, surreal, however, whatever, however, whatever word you want to use to describe it, but I thought that was pretty good. I'm like, okay, that's uh, that's a great way to sum it up. But yeah, certainly. And, and Liz, to your point, I obviously mentioned it earlier as, as a payroll company and the amount of people that we pay and contact that we make and communication we make with our client base with paying one out of six Americans, we, we just collect an absolute uh, ton of data. Not only that, but we also collect feedback uh, from our client base. And with that combination, in addition to us having, you know, our pulse on the, on the business trends and feedback with our clients, it gives us an opportunity to look into where uh, the, the shift place, the real workplace shift rather, that's taking place in 2021, a little bit differently than it was uh, in 2020. And clearly uh, DE&I um, is certainly at the forefront uh, of business owners today is something that they're thinking about more <laughs> now than they ever have before. Um, and, and in addition, well, I'm laughing because I have to break it down. So you said DEI. And so I want to make sure that that's really kind of that top bullet because you're talking about <laughs> that internally probably all the time, but for the rest of us folks, so you're talking about that great diversity, e uh, equality and inclusion. So great point, Liz. Thanks for, for, uh, for pausing me there. Working at ADP acronym, there are a lot of acronyms that we use in the 20 years I've collected a, boat, uh, you know, a, a ton of them. So know your audience, appreciate that. So yeah, certainly diversity, equity, inclusion uh, at the forefront business owners today. So with regard to some of the data and statistics we get back from our HR service associates that we surveyed, 75% of them have told us that um, they have a client that is asking them for some type of diversity, equity, and inclusion resources or some type of training that speaks to that uh, for their organization. So simple questions, how do we talk about diversity with our employees, conversation starters, people are challenged having those conversations in the past, knowing they need to talk about it now, they need a little guidance there, asking how they can connect more on uh, with diverse candidates. So they're looking to have a more diverse slate of candidates when they're interviewing uh, potential uh, candidates going forward. So interesting conversations that business owners are going to be faced with as we return uh, to work. And this is certainly one uh, that's top of mind uh, for many of them. And uh, I think that a lot of times it's better to be ahead of that conversation. And so to know that these things are taking place and that you're seeing this is a 
large trend. That helps us to position ourselves as part of that advisor to say, okay, here's some things that you know have been learned throughout that last year. And so being able to address those. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to the next slide because I really love what Heather's doing here. And this speaks to those people who she's trying to attract. Yeah, definitely. So um, when I'm doing it, I'm in the middle of a big rebrand of my companies. Um, so I have two of them. And so um, when I went through, I needed to hire some operations manager and some new staff. And so I, I worked with my business coach um, to come through and, and kind of come up with a framework of what the core values of uh, Saturday business solutions were. Once I got that team on board, we actually worked as a team to define our core values and to de define, you know, what our mission, I, I had actually created the mission because it's my company, but we had worked together as far as, you know, what our core values are and who we are, were as an organization. And we put a lot of thought and effort into that, um, you know, really deciding who we are, who we're looking to attract to our organization, not only you know our team, but also our clients. So who is it that we want to engage with, who's gonna become our community and who we're gonna to work um, together with. And what was really amazing about that was that uh, the closeness that we kind of experienced through that whole exercise was amazing. At the end of it, and there's six of us now on our team, um, we, you know, really everybody opened up, everybody was able to discuss and we, we actually became a safe place, which I think is yep. really important in any workplace is to be that safe place where people can come in, they can come to work, do their job and know that everybody on the team has their back and that we all share these core values and you can come back to them. So yeah. one of the things that I did with this is I had it created and I had this turned into a mouse pad and I sent them to my, my firm's 100% remote and I sent them out to all of my employees so that if they're ever questioning something, you know, that's happening in the company with a client, with a team member, it's right there. They can look right at what are our core values? How should I react? And this reminds them who we are and how we should be reacting to, our, you know, to each other and to our clients. You know, I love it that you turn this into a mouse pad. So to me, that speaks volumes because it's something that they can go and look at and you are a 100% virtual uh, accounting firm. And so how do you connect with your people? Well, you have to do things that remind them of who we are. And so I love that you created this tool for them to look at every single day. I mean, you look down at your mouse, how many times? And so I think this is brilliant. I, I thank you for sharing. And so, um, you know, it makes me think of also the book, uh, I was getting ready to go Google it, but uh, it's the Speed of Trust. Sad. No, Speed of Trust have you, it, it, by uh, uh, Covey, uh, Frank Covey. Oh, okay, Frank Covey. Stephen Covey? Yeah, okay, so Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey. Uh, Frank and Stephen Covey, I think uh, son and dad, <laughs> right? I think there's two of them. I think they're both authors. But yeah, that's one of my favorite books whenever you're talking about a team and building trust is all about being able to rely on each other and know that you're supportive. Totally. So I, I appreciate that. And talking about one of our favorite people. So I want to introduce one of our favorite people. And so we are thrilled that Chris is here from Lysio. And so Chris has got a really uh, cool firsthand experience of what it means to be part of this synergy. And we wanted to invite him to speak to all of you and share some of his thoughts. So thank you for being here. Sure, Liz. Thanks for having me. So, uh, hi everybody. My name's Chris, and I'm a confessed ADP Total Source fan. And I'm going to share with you today a few of the reasons why. Um, but we use ADP Total Source at our company, Lysio, and we've used Lysio, or pardon me, we've used ADP Total Source before as well. I've used it probably for the last ten plus years, and it's been really um, quite a big deal for us across that time frame. For many reasons and i think at the core growing a business is hard enough right we need to have experts around us supporting us helping us build etc and have the bright people around us when we need help and when i think about adp total source and what we are getting from them it's it's a lot of things right we think about peos and i saw the the poll earlier right there's so much in a peo it's actually it, it's it's worth unpacking and really getting to know but we use it for not only payroll and HR support, but also all of our benefits packages, healthcare, dental care, 
supplemental life insurance, all that kind of thing. Well, we use it for employee handbooks so people know where they stand. We have something to refer back to. That list just goes on and on. If you think about all the support we need to put around us and our employees. So the ADP Total Source platform brings all that together. And it does it in a way that is incredibly, incredibly easy. So what I look for when I'm thinking about a PEO is our team wants easy and I need easy, right? And that's such a big deal. So a key goal for us is to always get everything we're looking for in a single sleep package if we can. And that's, that's what ADP delivers. So when I think about you know, the, the trends and so forth, there's more stuff for us to pay attention to as business owners and as managers. And if we can take a lot of the stuff that people know and do incredibly well in their day-to-day and defray that work through them, all the power to us, right? So <clears throat> that's what we do. So I want to stay focused. I'm looking to stay focused and, and ADP's uh, very much helped me do that. And there's another key factor here that I think also bears mentioning. And I saw somebody in chat, as Jim in chat mentioned that um, PEOs are helping firms keep their liabilities down. Hmm. And that's worth thinking about. How does a business control risk? How does a business control liability? Well, a big deal for us is always, how do you avoid the bad day, right? The bad day where you get surprised and something comes out of nowhere and puts your business, imperils your business really, right? And when we think about that, there's always this thing called EPL, which is Employment Practice Liability. I am no EPL expert, right? Um, but I do know that when you are hiring employees, you don't need to do anything wrong to be sued, right? And lawsuits and that kind of thing can be very expensive. So one of the things we're looking, always looking to control is the amount of risk we're taking on and to have a team around us that can support us in the event that there is something like that, that heaven forbid happens. Something like ADP Total Source gives you the people you need, the guidance you need to navigate those. And they can also help you limit your exposure, limit your damage and keep your business going forward, right? So, you know, getting all this stuff built around the employee, getting all this stuff built around the founders and the managers and so forth is really, really important. And so that's why we ended up um, sticking with ADP. Now, I've stuck with them for years and years because I've always had a great client experience. And if you know anything about Lysio, we really care about client experience. That's kind of our thing, right? That's our jam. So from implementations to the experts you can turn to, I've always felt incredibly supported. And that is, is tried and true. So I had a great experience with them there. I think in terms of know-how, you're getting ADP. So you're getting, like Michael mentioned before, one in six people are processed across their, <laughs> across their system. There's a lot of know-how in the system. So you always get to the right person. Um, there's also the familiarity factor. So if somebody opens up the ADP app, chances are they've seen it at prior employers and so forth. The convenience is there, it's all baked in. And it's worth noting that, you know, this kind of stuff might sound expensive, but when we went to ADP, instead of having to negotiate our healthcare benefits on our own, as a small participant, a small buyer, we were able to get pulled in with other companies very similar to ours, get bundled into really what's a very large discount or large volume pricing pool, right? That gets us big discounts. We ended up saving more money just on healthcare than we ended up spending on the PEO itself. So it became, becomes you know, really a immediate win-win for everybody. So, um, so if you haven't explored PEOs before, I would certainly, I would certainly recommend it. And if you had any questions about it and so forth, I would certainly be a reference because I can kind of go through everything we've gone through process-wise to get where we've gotten and to be really efficient. Um, but I think it's certainly worth, uh, you know, if you haven't done it before, worth a deep dive. Yeah, I, I think that's great. And, you know, you're talking about um, bringing all the people together and, you know, being able to share resources quickly and get things out that you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So just be part of it. Sometimes it's all you want to do. And and I really feel like sometimes in those payroll pieces, there's so much to learn that you could be that payroll specialist, but it's better to network with somebody who's going to be bigger and up to date on all of the rules and something to be part of and focus on some of those other areas you need to dive into. 
Absolutely. I could go on and on because I think about the payroll piece. And then once you get, once you pay somebody, what do they want next? There's always something else they want, right? So then they don't want the 401k. <laughs> well, I don't want to be a 401k fiduciary and pick all the stocks and so forth, all the options for it. So what do I do? I say, exactly. yeah, we need to have a 401k for everybody. Sure. I'll call ADP. Next thing you know, you got a 401k and you know, it's, it's so easy. It's almost like crazy easy compared to thinking about buying everything or implementing everything a la carte. So and yeah, piecemealing is so, so it's, it's more expensive and it's just, it's, it's just harder. It's, it is. It's, you don't know what you need. You're not sure. So having, having someone to kind of give you the different options and then make it as easy, Chris, as you were saying, as making a phone call um, is pretty amazing mm -hmm. for sure. So, so Liz, is it, good, is it a good time to do another poll? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So I think we're going to do this one. Do you currently have any clients using a PEO? And remember, if you like CPE, you need to be here for 50 minutes and you need to answer at least three of the four polls that we're going to be putting up during the session today. So, and thank you, ADP again. Happy hour and CPE, man. I get get used to this. Covering a lot of bases. Hey, if there's yeah. any, if there's something, um, you know, that I could add, and and I mean, Chris, I mean, there's not better said than you know, Chris, as a as a as a as a client of ours, avoiding that one bad day, right? Somewhat something every business owner wants to avoid, but you know, having the resources to, if by chance you have that bad day, you know, you're not kind of left out in the cold, so to speak. So I think that's critically important, especially from a liability standpoint, but when you started talking about the benefit piece, you know, one of the things that, that, um, that I learned um, in doing this for, for so long is they, the, the package that we offer um, with regards to benefits, and it has everything that a Fortune 100 company would provide their employees, offering that um, as a small business owner, mid-sized business owner, it's a, there, there is, there, I will say 100% of the times you're going to wind up offering more benefits through the PEO than on your own, just because it's, it's too expensive. And there are certain requirements for specific benefits that you might need, and you may you know, be under a certain participation count for dental, for example, and you may not be able to get a plan. But having all of that available, thinking about putting that in front of uh, a candidate, you know, outside of salary, the next thing they always talk about is what do the benefits look like in culture? So that's really, really important. And there's no way uh, a small mid-sized business owner can do it on their own. It's just too expensive. So nice to have that uh, in your back pocket when you're, you know, not only looking for new talent, but re re retaining the, the talent and people that you have. I'm going to count down the poll real quick, just for those of you that maybe didn't notice the poll went up. Uh, it's five, four, three, two, and one. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Thank you, everybody, for voting in that poll. So Chris, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your experience. It's so helpful to, you know, hear from somebody that's actually using these services and understand why and, and hear about your experience. So we really, really, plus we just adore you. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I was about to say why too. And so for many of, of you here, you know who Chris is. And so, you know, you, you were familiar with Lysio, but but they, we do have some new audience members today that I just want to make sure that if you don't know about Lysio, so I want to just give you a little, little teaser. So go check out their website. But what they do is they really do focus on that client experience, which is why I think it's interesting to have you speak about the employee experience, because we can be on different sides of that fence of needing help. But right. Lysio really focuses on having a client collaboration, very seamless, easy approach. Definitely. And we have an happy hour episode up on the happy if you mm -hmm. want to learn more about it. Yep. yep. <laughs> and with All that right. said, I want to make sure that we raise a toast to our friends because we have some cool things to talk about today. And so I've got my drink ready. Do you have your yay? Okay. So this is a really fun drink to say, because, you know, we always try to come up with something fun. So this is a champapon. Let's say it and, all together. <laughs> Let's say it all together. It's champapom. Yeah, champapom. Remember so some like champapom. One, two, three, like I know we can't hear you guys, but if everybody says it together, I just feel like all of us saying champapom at the same time just sounds really funny to me. Are you okay. ready? Yes. One, two, three. Champapon. Yeah, that was fun. Wasn't that fun? That was good. It was good. It was like you're yes. crazy over there. Go away. Go back. I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna drink. <laughs> 
That's what I'm going to say to that. And then I am going to say the thing that we want to do and what the reason that we're drinking and toasting is to say, now we're going to enter into this like education piece where we're going to be able to pass off and um, have our friend Michael come back and really share with us why a PEO. And so we were, you know, hearing from Chris about, you know, how he's been affected by it, but we really want to break it down and we want to have a little bit of a conversation about the PEO itself. So. Michael, sure. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So, so with regards to, uh, you know, why a PEO, what a PEO does, we'll kind of take a few minutes to, to, to dive into that. What you're looking at is a, is, an ink article in terms of PEO being the bounce back partner that uh, small business need. And there's, there's several um, statistics, statistics that they cite um, that I'll share with you as well, but just really shedding some light on, you know, partnering uh, with the PEO from small to mid-sized business perspe perspective. Um, it's not only uh, works in good times, but, you know, more specifically when times get difficult. We've always found that whenever there's some type of change in the marketplace, it becomes a catalyst for our business because people just keep continuing um, to come over um, to us uh, to ask questions on how to handle certain situations when things change. So we're seeing that again right now. Um, so just a couple of, of, of interesting statistics. Number one, I think Chris mentioned it with regards to the, the ROI um, and the cost savings. I think when when we do a, an analysis on, uh, on, on, on a potential client, when we start finding some of those uh, hard dollar costs and some of those hidden, hidden costs and how much time they may, take do, uh, they may take doing specific tasks that they may not be um, specifically hired to do, they're non-revenue producing functions. So from a cost saving pr perspective, it's certainly something that helps. And with regards to um, growth, you know, those that partner with a PEO, as you can see, uh, grow between seven and nine percent. Uh, faster than those that um, grow with a non-PEO. And I think a lot of that has to do with what we provide from a culture perspective, from a technology perspective, from a benefit perspective, where you're really getting the best out of your employees. If you're making that investment in your employees to drive productivity, by covering on those bases, it, it would naturally give your uh, uh, people productivity to drive higher, obviously giving you the opportunity to grow your business. So just a couple of the highlights there on, um, you know, on why a PEO? I think that's great to, to explain. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to this next slide. Here we go. Yep, so w with respect to a PEO, I know there were several people on here that were familiar with it, um, some that were not. I think this is a great illustration to look at um, to really give a good side-by-side -side comparison. So what you'll see there sort of in the middle is the a traditional um, employment model where you have the uh, business owner or business in the middle, the red dot there, and then surrounded by multiple vendors or multiple people that they are working with uh, to provide uh, different types of resources to their organizations, benefit provider, payroll provider, retirement services, workers comp, potential outsourcing services, all disparate systems that don't communicate um, with one. So people are grabbing information from all of these different resources and trying to make hedge your tails of it and also having potential leakage and expenses by paying all of the different vendors. Through the co-employment model, um, such as ADP Total Source, the owner and, and Chris mentioned as well, share some of those responsibilities. So there really is a shift of overall liability um, through the co-employment relationship to the, the PEO side of the house. So with respect to HR guidance, EPLI policies and things of of the like, which really provide business owners with the ability to minimize um, their overall exposure, to minimize uh, their overall liability. So by putting everything under one um, umbrella, as you would imagine, or if you can envision rather, this bulletproof type system in which all of the different pieces and, and, and avenues of your business are sort of running through the payroll system. So your benefit, because if you think about it, really everything that we do is sort of a, a a reflection of payroll, whether it's a deduction cost, it's taxes or benefit deductions or retirement deductions, it all kind of flows through through payroll. So if you could think about what we provide from a payroll benefit, workers' comp, human resources, and 401k, like those five core functions and everything that is handled within under one umbrella, having one system where you can communicate, um, you're able to pull a lot of the data down, you're able to pull a lot of the reports down, all uh, concisely in in one 
um, system. You know, uh, with regards to the, yep. It makes me think of, of a real scenario that happened on Friday. So, you know, here we are at the end of the year and what we're heads deep in right now is 1099s and W-2s. And so for us, what we had was a client who called and panicked because what they had done is they had processed all of their W-2s and forgot about their retirement benefits that were not inside of their payroll system because it was outside of that network. And so, you know, they were like, what do I do? And so we talked about, you know, now you have to go and amend your W-2. So there was some of that happening because of exactly what you just said. They're in that middle column, that traditional little graphic there, and they're not part of that um, being embodied by a whole solution instead of they're kind of piecemealed. Yeah, things would certainly get lost in the shuffle and, and without question by having multiple systems. The other thing we see on the flip side of it, I mean, think about it from the employer, um, the employee experience. You know, the technology really transcends down to, to them as well, where everyone has their information um, on their phone. I mean, people don't go anywhere today without their phone. Um, and if you think about some of the information that we provide, it, it's everything. If the payroll information is there, they could request time off, they can clock in, clock out if that's something that they want to do um, through their phone. If they want to look at their benefit information with their family at home, they're free to do that. If they want to take advantage of some of our discounts with the various vendors that we provide partnerships with, um, they could do that as well. So it's all on the phone, even their benefit information. So if you would kind of think about this, God forbid something were to happen, you had to run out uh, in the middle of the night to, to, to an emergency room, people never forget their phone and you have your all your information there, your medical card and uh, all you'll need um, if, if that were to arise. So it's really, it, it, you know, I always positioned it as it, it, it's the people and the technology are really the, the, the foundation of, of the product, right? The technology and, and the ability to transmit information and everything being seamless and, and integration with the employee information and the people behind it, the HR guidance and the expertise, it really, puts a foundation under any business, um, regardless of size. And I think this might have come up in, in I think I saw it come up in the, in, in the chat with regards to size of company, but we do um, handle companies as, as little as, as two, depending on, on region. And we have uh, clients at, uh, you know, several hundred employees. Um, the benefit and the beauty of the product is it, it's scalable. So, you know, we do a lot of venture, uh, funded um, startups that, you know, get a ton of money and they start with a couple of people and, hey, they want to attract and retain the best. What better way to do it in a cost effective manner than to, you know, partner with the PEO and put that, um, you know, that opportunity out there in front of their uh, their employees. So I would say the average, I think the, the sweet spot probably about 40 or so, because that's probably where the, the, the HR part of the of the gets a little bit stickier. Whereas in those type of size organizations, it's maybe a controller or a CFO that also is sort of pseudo HR and handles certain situations, but it could get a little hairy. And that's kind of where we typically see it um, outsourced. Larger companies like to just leverage our HR resources as well, even if they have an HR department. So it varies, but I'd say probably 40 is probably your average. Michael, just, just a quick question. You talked about um, the ability, like they have an app on their phone. Um, I know that ADP has, because we had the uh, the marketplace on Appy Hour back in the fall. Oh, yeah. or in the fall. Um, there's a Slack integration. Does that also work with the total source? Slack? Yeah. Slack uh, we, we probably can provide a connector. I'm not sure if they're a, an actual vendor on marketplace. So let me kind of back up on what marketplace is for people that might not be familiar with it. So um, if you could think about your your phone and you go to the app store to download an app that you might need, yeah. whatever it might be for you, right? Um, you go to the app store, you download the app and you have it on your phone. So what, what ADP has created is a marketplace where our clients can actually go to this marketplace where there are, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of apps where there are various vendors that provide any type of service. There are, I'll give you some of the most popular ones, um, time and attendance, um, uh, 529 plans, tuition reimbursement, like we're starting to see some of those uh, being asked of our clients. So we're, we're connecting, um, building connectors if need be for, for those vendors. I'm not sure if, where Slack fits in there, but, um, you know, I, I, could, I could certainly dig a little further into it. But 
they may or may not be on, on in marketplace. So do you, would you know if they are by any chance? They are in marketplace. I just wasn't sure if they worked with the. If, they yeah. If, if they are, they they well they connect at different levels. We'd have to see if they would connect with the the total source, not just gotcha. straight payroll. So gotcha. that yeah, that okay. would be something that that because cool. each business unit has different uh, vendors in marketplace. Got it. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up and put the answer in the chat. Nice. Okay. So, um, you know, with respect to when uh, to recommend um, HR outsourcing, so we'll cover, we're going to cover a couple of pieces here. Um, our strongest fit industries where we really found the value uh, of our services provided the most. I'll touch on that in a second, but, you know, when is the, is the time to, to recommend um, the PEO? You know, the first thing that comes to mind are, are trigger events, right? And and that could be a number of different things. I mean, the most first one that pops into people's heads will be benefit uh, renewal dates. It's always the biggest trigger event. It's always a time when your clients are evaluating benefit strategy. Um, they have multiple vendors in the mix. They have brokers that they work with. So it's usually a good time to, at the very least, keep the brokers on their toes. Uh, but maybe, uh, you know, look at us from a, from a solution perspective. So I always look at that as a, as a big um, trigger event. One thing to note um, that I think is really important, the difference between working with brokers and working with the PEO model. Yes, we have, you know, almost 600,000 worksite employees with our groups. So the buying power um, is enormous. Um, we're not brokers. So there is no commission that's built in. And we do all of the administrative administration work for the carrier. So that shaves a couple of points too. So having those three things in the mix really gives us an advantage on, uh, on the, from the, from the benefit piece. And that's, that's critically important. So I'd say trigger events for, for benefits, also trigger events for workers comp. That's another trigger event for us when people look, um, especially companies. And you'll see to the right there, some of those strongest sets are in blue and gray collar industries, but we do very, very well there. So where it's a little bit more painful. Um, is really in the blue and gray collar, not necessarily um, your clerical groups. I don't think they're overly concerned with workers' comp renewals, but um, you know your, your HVACs, your plumber uh, manufacturers, specialty contractors, um, construction, those groups, um, if they are uh, running a safe working environment, because we obviously want to manage the risk, we would certainly entertain those groups. So those are good trigger um, events for those type of industries because Workers' comp premiums for those groups are significant. Um, not that much for clerical, but when you're talking about, you know, plumbing, HVAC, electricians, it's, uh, that's pretty costly. Um, you know, just touching on on a little bit more on the um, the strongest fits, and this has certainly gotten a little bit wider as we've grown as a as a as a business unit to more so to some of the industries I just mentioned, but. You know, majority of the group is still professional services, um, clerical environment, you know, working here in the Northeast, although I've been home for the past 10 months, our, our business is still predominantly, um, you know, white collar professional business, a lot of finance, you would imagine, in New York City, um, a lot of hedge funds, um, venture capital and technology companies. So those are really the companies that we look at. And um, Liz, do you mind if I go into just a little bit of the overall risk management? I think that would be fair to share here and how we underwrite and you know what we look at there. Is that good to cover? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, those are good points. Heather, do you? Yeah, do you mind if I somewhere? launch one more poll? Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, is absolutely. That okay? And then you can, you can keep talking, yes. but I just want to go ahead and make sure we're getting all the polls launched. So I'm going to go ahead and sure. do that. So all the right. biggest thing we look at, um, oh, I'm sorry. I cut you off there. No, 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 go ahead. I was just saying I launched the poll. Okay. Um, biggest thing, um, you know, we look at from a, an overall business perspective is risk management. It's what we're doing, right? So, so we do an evaluation on, um, on every business we look at. And we look at three different things. We look at credit, clearly, um, because uh, we want to make sure that we're going to be able to withdraw what we need from our clients is they pay their benefits and their employees. We do front the money 30 days ahead for benefits, and that's a pretty costly ticket. So we want to make sure we're going to be able to do that. Um, risk, overall risk, what are they doing? Um, as I mentioned, there are some industries that you might be surprised that were best fit for, for um, a PEO model. But hey, if you have a, an HVAC company or a plumbing 
business or a specialty contractor that's, again, running a, a clean, safe working environment. We know there are going to be some exposure there. We know that there's going to be some risk. But if it's if it's good enough risk where we think uh, it makes sense, we would certainly entertain that business. And then from a health perspective, how is the group running? What what is their historical renewals been been like? So we can make sure um, we price it the right way. So those are really really important. And yes, there are there are businesses that we we turn away um, just because it, the risk is just too great to take. Um, but I think we take a step back and you know when you look at it from a client perspective and when you're recommending clients, you want to make sure you know they're not hopping from vendor to vendor every year. Um, so by having that mindset of uh, underwriting the best groups, it gives us good retention. It gives us good renewal history with the carriers uh, where we're not gonna see those you know, inconsistent spikes year over year. So that's been, been critically helpful um, with regards to the business that we've brought on for the, you know, the past 20 years or so. And that makes sense. So understanding that criteria helps you to kind of guide that client through to see if it's a good fit. Heather, do you, you want me to go ahead and count down the poll? Okay. All right. So I'm going to say five, four, three, two, and one. Thanks a bunch. Awesome. Yeah, I would definitely say that this particular year, so there's some chatter happening um, over in chat, that this particular year has definitely triggered a whole lot of HR questions and, you know, it, it more so than ever before, that might even be true for a second year in a row. So, uh, you know, I think that it's it's really, really nice if you've got any of these industries or any type of clients that would be a good fit to consider that, be knowing that we may have continued HR questions. Yeah, you know, and I see it in the chat um, also, uh, certainly right, the... Um, uh, uh, payroll protection program that trigger event. So that's been, you know, with from from. If you think about, go back to uh, the first wave um, or the first stimulus package, we did really really well um, with our clients guiding them, and it, that was choppy. It was uncharted waters. The information was inconsistent, but we were able to communicate what we were receiving to our clients, keep them in line, and a very very high percentage of them um, received their loans, which was um, you know great for us. Now, with the second rendition of it, this Consolidated Appropriations Act um, that was signed on the 27th, there have been some changes, not only um, kind of across the board, and some of the, the bigger ones were the, um, the uh, retention credit, which is a, a, a big one that has changed now, the employee retention credit. Um, and there have been, I think there, there have been some slight changes, to the, I believe the amount that you could um, uh, uh, borrow or 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 um, or receive with respect to this stimulus package, and I think there's some more to come on it as well. So it's definitely has caused uh, conversations for us to have, but um, more to come there. But certainly um, <laughs> a trigger event that's uh, right upon us right now. Yeah, you said more to come, and I'm like, and yes, and we agree. <laughs> There'll be more interpretations, and so it, it, more fun, more fun. Yeah. Uh, complexity is always good. Like I said, complexity is always good for us. It's it's we seem to be on the on the pulse of that. Stuff, so. Well, and that's important because that means that we can focus in other areas. Right. So you know, our clients are are facing first in a lot of different directions right now, and I feel like more so than ever, we need to reach out to those partners who can help us because that means we get to deepen those relationships, but it also means that we can focus other places. So. You know, I, I think this is valuable to everybody to think about. Yeah, so I know um, we want, we could shift gears a little bit here to the, the benchmark report that we provide. So this has been a game changer for, for our business and has been. I think we're on our third version of it now. It just gets better and better again, continued feedback. And, and what this really provides is a look under the hood um, to a client's business in every area. Are they competitive with pay? Are they competitive with their benefit offerings? Are they competitive with their contributions? What does the retirement plan look like? How long does it take them to hire people? Um, and we really go through this real in-depth analysis with them and generate a benchmark report, giving them a good view under the hood and a diagnostic of, hey, what does my business look like compared uh, to the industry? You know, am I competitive? Uh, am I not? Um, where are my gaps in the business? Where are the blind spots? And it's eye-opening um, 
to, for every conversation we have on it because there's always something that's missed. It's just that it's just nature of of, of business, right? And, and there's always something that's missed and there's always something that pops up. So this is great conversations for us to have in the field. At the very least, if you think about a business doing one of these on their own, it's going to probably cost them uh, a few thousand dollars. Um, this comes with every meeting we have because it gives us an opportunity to have the next conversation um, with our potential clients um, to see what their business looks like. So this is something that you know I, 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 I've watched um, evolve over the last few years, and it is uh, something that's been extremely impactful, not only in the field, but with our CPA partners as well, because it gives them an, an, a look at, uh, under the cover as well, and uh, as what we're providing for clients. Again, we have a ton of data. We collect all of that information. So it's not third party. This is data that we have uh, uh, we've received over a number of years. So uh, it's, as, it's as good as you can get. You know, perspectives are really great. And I'm going to go ahead and go over to the next slide because I feel like it's a value and I want to make sure that we get it included. So, you know, really that's that um, experience. So I wanted to give you a second to talk about this one. Sure. So accountant um, experience is something that we put in place, I guess, probably a couple of years now. And it, it, what it does, it just gives the opportunity, um, probably doing more of these virtually uh, over the last 10 months than in person, although we love our in-person meetings, but give you an opportunity to go through you know, your goals kind of walk you through the process that your clients would experience if you refer um, any one of them to uh, to ADP Total Source. So kind of gives you a look uh, at what our process looks like. And it's in several different stages. Um, it's not something that we, this is not a very transactional business. There's a lot that we really dig into when we take a look, uh, when we do an analysis with uh, with our clients. And like I said, providing you with tools and some of the resources through the process, obviously like a benchmark report, a benefit analysis, technology, which you would uh, get a preview of, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one tech demo, give you like a view of what the technology looks like, how it uh, interacts with uh, you know other pieces of our business. And it's you know kind of everything that we would do for a potential client. Um, so that is something that um, you know many of our CPA partners are, uh, are taking us up on and we are continuing to grow that area of business um, day by day. So enjoy the partnership with uh, TPA community. And again, if anyone wants to take advantage of this, we'd be more than happy um, to provide that for them and the clients. Yeah, that's that's great. And so, um, you know, being able to understand more and being able to understand those partnerships um, help us to network and which always helps our clients. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also say that you've got a couple of things happening with some certifications. So, you know, as our community, we really, really like our yeah. certifications. That's like, I don't, we, we like that we love yeah. them. It just, it's one more opportunity to learn something and why education we just do. <laughs> so this is exciting news. So you have a PEO certification. Do you want to share anything about, you know, any more about that PEO certification for us to go and look at? No, I mean, listen, it's something that our CPA team, our CPA teams are delivering um, to the firm. And I believe they take them through that experience to, to certify them. We do that internally as well. We've done it with, um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. We've done it internally with our partners as well. Just kind of brushing them up on, you know, what we provide and uh, making sure they're familiar with, you know, really at a high level, what we uh, can deliver as a business unit. Um, you know, some of the things that we're, uh, you know, proud of as being a certified PEO, and that's something that's that, that differentiated for us, the marketplace that we have, just kind of making sure we're giving them, you know, everything we have in, in order for them to communicate um, with their clients as well. So something that we would certainly, again, continue to look forward to delivering to the CPA community. And, you know, I'd like to say that that's also how I got brought into the ADB community is that I was at a conference and I was being asked my opinion, not I wasn't being sold to. I was being genuinely asked my opinion about something. And, and it struck me as, well, this is a little different. And that's my where my journey began with ADP was in this we're you know, genuinely diving into the accounting community to ask you, what is it that you're looking for? What is it that we can do? What is it that we can provide? Because that's the kind of world where you feel like we are actually a team 
And so, you know, I think that it's important that that we're all together and trying to accomplish the same things. Yeah, I think uh, just so I could share with everyone did come up in the chat, um, Total Source, it was a connector. So Slack is available through uh, through tool. We'll, uh, you'd, you'd have to build a connector for that as well. There was a question up there about multi-state regarding states that require the employer to do the registration on their own, even though they're using, I'm not quite sure. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, my, I'm sure my information will be on here or uh, be more than happy to kind of dive into that a little bit further. I'm just not quite sure what. If you want to drop your email address inside of chat, that would probably be the, the best way for, for you to share that. Today, and today. I love Miriam's little emoji that she put in there with the little glasses. Yay, yeah. Very cute. Yep, so true. So Heather, I think that this is really fun for us to share other ways to connect yes. with us. Do you Absolutely. Wanna... So you can connect with Liz and myself and our sponsors a bunch of different ways. Um, really, the best way to find us is uh, theappyhour.com. That's where we have the recordings from our, our past episodes. We have a bar book. So if you're interested in learning about all the great drinks that we have, uh, we have highlighted on the show along with the sponsor information. Um, for all of the apps that have come on this show over the last two and a half years, you're going to find all of that there. Um, you can also read our blog. So we usually we usually publish about four blog articles a month. And, uh, you know, once you subscribe to the, to the webinars, uh, we send you our newsletter as well. So always happy to hear from you. You can also find us on, do you want to go to the next slide, Liz? Uh, you can also find us in the Appy Hour lo uh, Lounge Facebook group. So we have a lounge where we can hang out and talk apps and um, our sponsors are in there too. So a lot of times we'll have people ask questions in there um, and make sure you visit ADP's uh, website. And I'm going to launch a poll asking you if you'd like them to reach out to you. So um, they are amazing. So I love my rep, Sarah. Um, I adore her actually. My clients adore her. And one of the things I love about ADP is it's not just a vendor, it's a partner. And that's how it feels. ADP actually feels like an extension of my team um, in my firm. So definitely, you know, connect with them to learn more about how you can have that relationship um, in your firm as well. Um, and then if you're joining us from uh, Facebook, we love to see you there, but there's a lot of fun happening here inside Zoom. Um, so, you know, go ahead and register for the Zoom. Um, the link is on our website. Um, we'd love to have you uh, join us in Zoom next time. And I'm going to go ahead and la uh, launch the last poll. Uh, Thank you. Hold on. And I am going to launch it right now. We're going to leave that up for just about a minute. Um, but thank you so much, Michael, for coming on. I learned so much about it. I really, I, I, I think it's such a great offering for companies that, 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 you know, can benefit from that lower risk, from the lower cost and the resources, right, of basically having an entire, you know, um, HR department that they can rely on uh, in their own companies. It's pretty remarkable. Hey, listen, I, I appreciate uh, the invite. This was a lot of fun. Um, my, again, my first happy hour um, invite, so this was great. Again, I know the question's popping up on multi-state. I'm unsure of it. You can email me. You know, we do have tons of clients with, um, you know, multi-state exposure that we deal with. There are, if it's a file by client state type of question, that might be what you're asking. You know, there are no issues there, but just uh, shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy um, to get the answer for you. Just, just, just want to give you the right one. Fantastic. So I'm just going to leave this up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and count you down. Uh, I, it, for the PE, uh, the CPE. Oh, I was just going to say, Liz, could you put the CPE <laughs> slide up so people can know how to find their CPE? All right, I everybody. Got I'm, you. Gonna, I'm going to count you down on this last poll. Five, four, three, two, and one. And that's it for our polling. Um, awesome, awesome episode. Um, thank you so much. Um, to the entire ADP team. So behind the scenes, we, you know, we have Nick and we have Amy. Of course, we have Michael and thank you to Chris um, from Lysio for joining us. Um, we adore you. Um, can't wait to have you guys on again. And to everybody that's joined us today, thank you so much. Um, we'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks when we have Method joining us uh, for Happy Hour. Yes, yes. Thank you friends for joining us and we will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.